Throughout the entire course of the time that I spent locked up, which was many fucking years, I met quite a few crazy individuals. When you hear this story about Johnny, AKA the Panty Bandit, this is certainly about to take the cake. I met this individual Johnny probably somewhere around my last year of being incarcerated. And when I met this guy, I didn't honestly know his entire situation at first. It wasn't until getting to know this guy through getting to know this guy and also from hearing some of the crazy stories about this dude that um, he developed the name Panty Bandit while in prison. Johnny was a crackhead. To put it simply, he was a drug user. He lived to smoke the crack. While in prison, at this last prison that I was at, this prison was a youth offender program prison. This prison was a drug rehabilitation prison. This prison was a behavioral modification prison. And this prison was also a re-entry into society prison. So this is like four things that this prison was trying to do all at the same time. And to be completely honest with you, this shit did not work at all. This place was an absolute fucking clusterfuck. What they did require us to do at this prison, no matter what you were there for, whether it be youth offender, drugs, behavior, or re-entry, the key point to this prison was you were gonna sit in a plastic chair and you would have to go to groups. These groups were all day. They started at like seven in the morning. They did not end till four in the afternoon. It was like bang, 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 bang. They face fucked you with groups. What these groups consisted of was again, you sitting in your plastic chair, all in a common area, 80 something people, while a counselor would sit there and face fuck you a bunch of bullshit that nobody took seriously, <laughs> paid any mind to, or cared about, just to be completely honest. But it was sitting in these groups, one of these billion groups that I had to go to while being at this prison, that I met Johnny, who would later gain legacy through his nickname, the Panty Bandit. Sitting in group, Johnny is sitting right next to me for whatever reason, I don't even really know this guy. There was a counselor in the front, a relatively attractive young female, which most of these counselors were relatively young, attractive females, that also added to a list of fucking problems this prison had. And she was talking about how she had just come back from being on vacation, her and her whole family, they went to Disney World, they had a wonderful time, the kids, the husband, Disney World! Telling this story to a bunch of guys who have been locked up, some for over 20 years. Who the fuck cares about your trip to Disneyland? But we're sitting here, forced to listen to this bullshit. And the strangest damn thing happens. Uh, Johnny leans over and he says to me, I wonder if she got some really cute Mickey Mouse panties while down there in Disneyland. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> what? And then he says to me, he says, um, I wish I could sniff those panties. <laughs> oh shit. I should be surprised by this, but the fact is I'm sitting in prison, so I'm not surprised by anything. Who are you, and why in the fuck are you sitting next to me? As I slowly begin to inch my chair away from this guy, dude, you're fucked up. Fucked up. I was completely thrown off by all of this, and I immediately began to think to myself, this dude, he's a fucking sex offender. Fuck this guy. But throughout the course of me being forced to deal with this individual because I was housed in the same housing unit with him, I learned that he wasn't locked up for any sexually related charges at all. And I know this personally because I had people that I could call on the outside and to be honest with you, I would have these people look up individuals that I thought were in there for sex charges. So of course, I had this guy looked up. Hey, I need you to run a background check. I got a license plate right here. It's Zero Bravo Echo Panty Bandit 249. Yeah, and it came back, it was all drug related stuff. All drug stuff, all from smoking crack. <laughs> what is this? Dude, I'm good. There's so much this guy used to tell me about that absolutely used to just blow my fucking mind. And when I tell you this, it's gonna probably it's gonna, it's gonna fuck you up. He told me he was doing work on a woman's house one day. I don't know anything about the woman, whether she was old, whether she was young, whether she was pretty. I, I don't know anything about that. All I know is he said, you know, I was doing work on this woman's house one day and uh, I asked if I could use the bathroom. And she said, yeah, sure, sure. The bathroom's, it's, it's right down the hall, right, right down the hall. He said, okay, thank you, thank you. He said, I went into the bathroom, and as I was in there, I noticed there was a hamper in there full of dirty clothes. He said, and I don't know what happened, man, 
But the next thing I know, I was knee deep in dirty women's underwear. Ah, ah. You guys don't think that's weird, do you? I am going over here. Over over here. You're gonna go over there. I'm going I'm going over here though. I am not proud that I knew this individual while in prison. I mean, I gotta be honest with you, this is some fucked up shit. It really is. But this is one person that I met while locked up who, for whatever reason, was okay telling the stories of this shit that he used to do. I mean, it's almost like this was what made him who he was, Johnny, AKA the Panty Bandit. And I wish I had a picture of this guy so I could just show you how fucking crazy this dude looked, but I don't. I do, however, have a caricature that I drew of this guy. And ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure or displeasure, this is Johnny, AKA the Panty Bandit. I wish to God I would have drawn him with panties on his head. And a matter of fact, I know I did at some point, but I just don't have that picture anymore. I drew this guy like two or three different times because, again, he had this legacy, this, this fucking story about him that I knew I wanted to tell one day. And I wanted to have as much visual reference to work with when I told that story as I could. Unfortunately, I only have that, that one picture. To add to this, he was only one of three individuals who were part of a low-life, bottom-of-the-barrel prison clique. There was Johnny, AKA the Panty Bandit. There was Coffee Man, nicknamed Coffee Man. And there was also Palmer, AKA the Serial Killer. And I'm going to tell you all about those individuals real soon. Before I end this, I do have to say one thing. Going to get the props for this video, these women's panties that I had to purchase, this was not an easy thing to do. This was actually very embarrassing. I almost bailed. I almost ejected. <laughs> I almost flew right out of the driver's seat when it came to me having to go get these props. I almost said, Joe, you can't do it. It's just too, it's too fucking embarrassing. And to give you a sense a little better of what that was like. You know, I walked up to the cash register and I actually had a few things other than these and these were buried under everything that I had. <laughs> and I get up to the cash register and he's ringing everything up and he gets to these and it's just... They're props for a video, man. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna wear them. Is that what you want to hear? I, I bought these so I could wear these, okay? Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Good choice. They're really comfortable. Anyways, hey look, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know exactly what you think. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace! Let's give some shout outs. Always, always a pleasure to give shout outs to all of the awesome people who support After Prison Show. And I hope I'm able to shout you out, you, right now. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, yesterday's video, how to make a prison weapon. Glad a lot of you enjoyed that. Let's shout out Luke Don't Worry. Luke Don't Worry said, LOL, how to make a thousand degree knife in prison. Special shout out to you, Luke. Awesome comment. Who else we got here? William Woods. William Woods says, please make a rapist potato shirt. I will buy it. Coming soon, rapist potato shirts. We're gonna make some awesome rape potato shirts. Potatoes, they're rapists. Justin Leo. Is the classic bar of soap in a sock possible or did they use liquid soap to prevent that? As far as the more known prison weapons, the soap or lock in a sock, the sharpened toothbrushes, all of those things are very real. And people do make devices just like that and use them. A uh, Toothless Outlaw asks, another kick-ass video man, is your PO cool with you making videos about how to make weapons in prison? I'll find out next week when I go see him. 
but I'm quite sure he is because he is aware completely of After Prison Show, 100% behind it, and he knows that what I'm doing is just either A, entertaining folks, or B, trying to inspire and motivate folks to not end up anywhere like where I was at. Let's go to Instagram real quick, shout out a few people from there and Twitter as well. Let's just shout out some people who decided to follow after prison show. Uh, Robert Schroeder, Josh Cerna, who else we got? Uh, Dead Punk Rock, Donovan303, Dirty Birds 07, and Joe Holt. Thank you all for the support on Instagram, APS Instagram Army. You rock. Let's shout out some people who retweeted my last tweet, whatever that was. I, I, don't, I don't, what was my last tweet? How to make a prison weapon, who retweeted this? Let's shout out Oni Imonen, Gabriel Noriega, Nikki Banks. Let's shout out Austin, Zach, BuggyBots12. I'm gonna follow like three of you right now. Let's follow Oni, Gabriel Noriega, Nikki Banks, all of you, you gotta follow. Thank you for your support on Twitter. Hey, until next time, peace.